Hello learners and welcome to your video tutorial over moment of inertia calculation. So let's start by talking about what is the moment of inertia. Well it's comparable to the mass of an object. It is an object's ability to resist changes in rotation. So we're going to start by talking about a solid cylinder. So here I have just a metal can and we're going to imagine that the can is just rolling along as such. Its axis of rotation is the green dot right here, just going straight through to the other side, rolling across ever so nicely. Now, the moment of inertia, whenever you are deriving it for an object, it is the integral of r squared dm. Now, with the cylinder, here's going to be our strategy. We are going to integrate by looking at a very small portion of the cylinder. And I've got this as just a piece of paper inside the cylinder. Now, let's look at our cylinder. It has a length L, and let's just get a drawing of it here. And it's got a length L, and we're looking at a very thin portion of that cylinder. So imagine that you kind of trace out this portion that goes all the way down and through, and it's just a very thin sheet in the cylinder, kind of like this sheet of paper. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about the components of my sheet. Let's say that the sheet or the, the thin section of cylinder that I am investigating, let's say that it has a mass that is just dm, a very small, infinitesimally small mass dm. Now, let's say that it is out from my axis of rotation, or AOR. Let's say that the sheet itself is out a distance little r. So r is the distance from axis of rotation. Okay, now let's say that the sheet also has a thickness dr. So the sheet itself has a thickness dr. So if I were to actually just pull this sheet out of the cylinder, the width of the paper is dr. So it's a very small, infinitesimally small sheet. Okay, let me just tuck that back in there. Okay. So the, the sheet inside here has a mass dm. It's a distance r from the axis of rotation, and the sheet itself has a thickness dr. Now, what's useful when we're talking about a solid three-dimensional object is the fact that its density is uniform throughout the object, meaning it has uniform mass distribution. In other words, the density of the cylinder is a constant. And total density would be mass over volume, and that ratio wouldn't change whether we were talking about the whole cylinder or we were talking about a very thin portion of the cylinder. In other words, the mass of my very thin section, which is dm, its ratio to the volume of my very thin section, oh, I'll call it dv, is the same as total mass or to over total volume. So this ratio doesn't change, which means I can solve for dm. If I multiply by dv, I get dm being equal to total mass over total volume, which is just density of the cylinder. So I'll write total mass, total volume, times dv, the very very small volume of my thin sheet. Okay, so I can take this and I can plug it into dm. So, let's do that. Let's go moment of inertia of my solid cylinder. That is going to be equal to the integral of r squared dm, which is total mass over total volume times dv. Well, 
We are integrating total mass and total volume are both constants, which means I can take those out of the integral. So it leaves me with r squared dv. Well, I can't really integrate r with respect to dv, so I need to get these two things in terms of each other. Well, what would be the volume of my very thin sheet? Well, it's just that, a very thin sheet. So it has a thickness, which we said was dr. And if I look, if I take the sheet out, well, it's got a length L, the same as my cylinder. Well, to get volume, I need length times width or th the thickness here, but I need this dimension. Well, it was inside the cylinder, which if you can see, that is a circle, which if I stretch it out, is that. So we said that it was a distance r from the axis of rotation. So its radius is r and I want the circumference. Circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So if I take length times 2 pi r times dr, that tells me the volume of my very thin sheet, which is dv. So let's rewrite this with those substitutions. So I end up with i being equal to, I'm going to pull out m over v, v, times the integral up. Okay, I've got r squared times dv, well, that's times l, 2 pi r, times dr. Ah, look at that. I have r, dr. I'm all set when it comes to integration. So let, let's pull out our other constant, L. So I end up with m over v times L times the integral of, well, now I've got r squared times r, dr. Now I am able to integrate. Key though, when you are integrating, what are your limits of integration? Well, we're going from the axis of rotation throughout the entire can. Well, the can itself is part of the axis of rotation because we have a solid cylinder. So again, treat the axis of rotation like the zero point, like the origin. Well, where does the can start? Well, it starts at zero. So that would be one of my limits, zero. And I would go all the way out to r, the radius of the can. So simplify that, conduct that integration, and you will have the moment of inertia of your cylinder.